It's a wonderful feeling being back with students. I had no clue as to the keynote address. So I think what I can assume is I'm getting a couple of minutes extra time. Yeah. Uh, if that's permitted. I'd Um, I think that's the little logo we designed for ourselves. And uh, before I proceed with talking about the few things that we have done, I'd, I'd really like to um, explain a little bit about how this was evolved. <laughs> and this also speaks somewhat of my personal journey which I think is extremely important, particularly for students. Because we always talk about, or we always see nice pictures, pretty pictures, some not so nice, and so on. And we always look at the destination, but the, the journey is somewhere forgotten. So I think it's the, it's the journey that's important, the process. I would not spend too much time on the word architecture, except to say that architecture is not about buildings. It encompasses far more. It's about environment, it's about sociology. The architect has a huge responsibility, and I think buildings is just one part of it. The other important point, and which I found, is something that should start to happen in the education system, is that architecture should be read along with the other arts. We are no different. All the other arts are also part of architecture, and I think it forms a whole. So it's not really treated in isolation. I found this with, I think the name of Arjun was taken, my son, when he was studying. They were asked to do a film, a 10-minute film, as part of their architectural curriculum, and to understand the fine arts, music, and so on and so forth, because ultimately they are all tied and woven together. And I think that that makes it richer, it makes it more complete. Uh, environment, sustainability, certainly. It's coming so much to the fore, but uh, I have not bought in my earlier works, which we, we, how I started life 30, 35 years back. But we talked about sustainability even then. I was greatly influenced by people like Laurie Baker, uh, the hands-on people of Mary Gandhi. And one, one did try to assimilate some of that. It's now become a kind of fad that we have to do green buildings and we need leads points and so on and so forth. And uh, it's nice, but I think leads is not substantial enough as a lot of studies are showing. It, we need to get into it far, far deeper. The second part, which is ecology, uh, it's not what it seems to be on the face of it. Ecology is what we, the way we look at it. We have looked at a holistic, integrated approach to developing comprehensive teams in every discipline to be able to take a total approach on design. Today, the designer is not a virtuoso. He's not working in isolation. He needs a huge input of diverse information that need to come in. For example, we are working with a German designer who specializes in understanding how you bring sunlight into the building, even developing solar tubes and so on and so forth, apart from what we cannot ignore, what we call common sense. If you cannot understand light, you cannot understand the sun, you don't know the penetration of light, I think we have no business to be talking about architecture. It's so fundamental. Facades, what the building will look like, are so unimportant. So uh, the, the issue of ecology, again, to, to, uh, you know, to sum it up, is that we have developed these very, very comprehensive, integrated teams of individuals and groups who work together so that we have all the information that we need to do a comprehensive job, a total job. So that's as far as ecology is concerned. So we are not literally talking about ecology as is that enunciated in webs. The third part, which to me is most important, 
because it's part of a personal journey. Uh, why I say personal journey? Because the word spirit is used. You can look at <laughs> if you if you would look at the address, or if you if you go back to the address that Baragan made when he received the Pritzker Prize, he talked about the fact that he could not conceive of an architecture that had no silence, no tranquility, no serenity, and no spirit. So, he spoke of the word spirit. We spoke about spirit being translated into structure. In this part of the world, and this is a very, very important point, because we are working in the subcontinent, we are from the subcontinent, and I think there, seem, there needs to be an understanding of who we are, what is the subcontinent, what is the philosophy of the subcontinent, I will digress for a minute here that we've always discussed and discussed in the cows go home that Japan has perhaps been the only country where we can see a very sustained linkage between the past, the present and how they've evolved. Of course, there have been reasons for it. They've never been colonized. That's one of the major reasons why this has happened. In our part of the world, I think it's important, therefore, to understand who we are. For me, that beginning or the attempt to understand has come through my first interface with Patanjali, who wrote the treatise on yoga. Because it's the first time you begin to understand that all that we've talked about, architecture and ecology, is manifest external. Patanjali has opened another door that we are always referring to the object that's there but never bothered to understand the subject. <coughs> now, that's, that is what this region is, uh, is all about. That very intense understanding or the attempt to understand the subject. The inward journey, what we call, and that's where the silence, the tranquility and everything else starts to happen. So, this is a subject that could go on for weeks, months, and so on, just this subject to discuss. But the whole idea of talking about spirit is, to sum it up, is the final culmination point that Patanjali puts to the path of inward progress, which is sanyama, or in simple terms, balance. This is the end of the journey. I will not get into uh, all the preparatory steps and so on. Of course, I think most people would have read about them. But this is not about reading. It's about experiencing. We can keep on asking questions our whole lifetime. But uh, it's not a subject which can be learned by asking questions. It's a question of experience. So you go through your preparatory steps, and you come to the final, what we call the trinity and I will just take two minutes on it, which is dharana, dhyan, and samadhi, the, the three-legged uh, stool, as Osho used to put it. And what is dharana? Especially for the kids, concentration. <coughs> now, we know that word, that, you know, concentration could be Louis Pasteur pouring through a microscope intensely, and that's concentration. Protracted concentration, which goes on for a long period of time, fixed on the same object. They have likened it to pouring oil from one vessel to another where there is no jumping off the walk, you know, of the liquid. It's smooth flow one to the other. Is the next step, which is, which is dhyan. And then you move on to the final step where object and subject cease to exist as two. Duality disappears and we have oneness. So this is a subject which is obviously bordering is the metaphysical, but it's fascinating to us because it's so important. Because you have the tangible and then you have this other part, which is really our part of the world. And I think this is what we have given to the world. But, and I would, and uh, I found this uh, wonderful. I mean, I, it's, it goes back several years in the two or three lectures that I attended. Over.